What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Real Down. I'm your host, Jimmy Skinner. With me, as usual, Garrett Johnson. What's up, brother? What's going on? Back Not much, man. Week. Yep. Another great show. Talk about some tournaments while me and you get ready for a tournament. I'm yep. starting to get fired up, even though I have like all the reasons to not be fired up about it. We got uh, for anybody that's not paying attention to the season, the first Bassmaster Kayak Series events coming up. We've got the Lake Gunners will stop uh, two days for that one. Garrett signed up for that one. Uh, I decided to yeah. put that money towards my daughter's extremely expensive karate, whatever. Yeah, so, so she can beat you up later. Yeah, with weapons. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, apparently, I, I'm I just paid for all sorts of sparring gear and weapons training Dang. for a 12 year old. I was like fantastic and jujitsu. So Jesus Christ. But so that's I'm awesome. fishing, I'm fishing a local club event that's down there. Uh, NACA and TVKA will be down there at the same time. We'll double dip, but we've got like excellent Holy. weather right now and it ends tomorrow. And then it sucks for the next two days. It's not terrible, but could I mean, be better for sure. Thunderstorms and like three inches of predicted rain. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh it's definitely gonna shake it up a little bit. Yeah, it's gonna suck. I would just like to I would I would love to start a tournament one morning and not have to wear my rain gear and you know it not be freezing outside. I think during the tournament you won't have to, but it'll be cold. I, I hope not. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh I'm actually I think I'm taking off tomorrow. I think I'm going down there. I gotta go. I gotta go buy some some material for a job in the morning. But I do believe that the kayak and all my gear is going with me to do that. And then I'm going at least to get on the water in the good weather and look yeah, around again. Come out with uh, all uh, 300 people or whatever is going to be out there this weekend. So that'll be yeah. fun. I'm curious to go down there and just see how many people's pre fishing right now because I'm sure it's probably 100 or 150 or so. There were a bunch say. of people Sunday. Like a yeah. bunch of people. So, uh, but anyways, but it, it's a big lake. So, yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah. Well, uh, so in the meantime, uh, yeah, we got a, we got Lake Murray to talk about. And I don't um, know anything about this lake, like, including, like, I knew where it was. I had to, like, double take on that to make sure. <laughs> yeah. But, like, five minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is just uh, not one that's ever been on my radar, even though it fishes really, really well. Yeah, we talk you should about put it, it on your radar. Man, my, my radar's fucking packed, dude. I got too many. Kind of an interesting lake from when I was looking at it. It looks kind of like... It looks like it should be a lowland reservoir, but it's like almost 200 foot deep by the dam. So Jesus. It's, and it's only at like 300 elevation or something like that. So, that, so. that's why it's not on my radar. That's just not... <laughs> I can't fish that stuff. But, I, I think I've been to one Highland Reservoir, and it's Del Hollow, and Del Hollow can. But I don't know if it fishes like a Highland. We'll talk to these guys about it. Here yeah, no, bit, these but... these dudes we've got on are definitely the experts. Uh, the event was the KBF, uh, their second stop. They went straight from Florida up here. Uh, another one of their, you know, their style two day events for anybody that uh, maybe just be new to keeping up with all this. Um, where most of your national trails run a two day consecutive combination tournament. KBF does two individual days, a Saturday and Sunday tournament that are separate and you can pay in and do a, what they are now calling a double up. So it's basically a two day tournament as well. Um, so without, without any further ado, we'll bring in the, uh, day one winner and the double up winner, Casey Reed and the day two winner, Ryan Matlowit. Matt, say your last name. Matt Alevich. Oh, wow, I was way off. Mm, sorry, butchered. <laughs> yeah, we're going to put you back in grammar school or something. I'm from Alabama. That's not even worth the time. <laughs> it wouldn't matter. Well, what's going on, fellas? Not much, man. How are you? Man, we making it. Everybody get back from the... Yeah, from the, just uh, out. <clears throat> heck yeah. Everybody get back from, uh, from the Carolinas okay? Yep, I came uh, back from South Carolina, drove almost halfway, stayed in the hotel, back to Pennsylvania where I'm from, and then uh, woke up this morning and shoveled 85 sidewalks for a bunch of old people. Oh, you gotta get back right, right back to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing I can say as a Southern guy, I've never had to shovel a sidewalk before, so I don't know how fun or not fun that is. No, it's not great. <laughs> 
Well, awesome. Well, uh, so Casey, we'll start with you. Um, you were the big winner over the weekend. Uh, give everybody a little bit of a rundown about you know who you are and where you're from, how you got into kayak fishing and everything. Yeah, so, I mean, my name's Casey Reed. I, I've been kayak fishing, I don't know how long now, I guess about nine, ten years maybe. Um, you know, just, just started fishing ponds in the, the river by me and just found out about tournaments, man, and, like, it's been on ever since. Like, started fishing little club tournaments and then KBF started doing the online stuff and – got into the online stuff and qualified for the national that first national championship and, you know, made the trip out to Kentucky Lake and like, dude, I've been ate up with it ever since and just fishing as much as possible. You know, I ran a local club for about four years and uh, unfortunately I had to give that up just because I was traveling so much and I really wanted to, to do this full time kind of fishing thing. Get it. That's definitely. I was fixing to say that's definitely something I see a lot of in kayak fishing. Is there's so many tournament directors that are. I feel like if you're as die hard about fishing the tournaments, you can't do both. You know, like unless you're Steve Owens, and that doesn't count because Steve Owens yeah. is just a different breed of animal, or AJ because AJ can do both. But you know, it's it's such a commitment to run a club that. Like, like, you know, Casey's a perfect example. You kind of got to pick one or the other. And yeah. Garrett starting to touch on that. Yeah, I'm starting to dabble in that realm of, because it's hard to commit all your weekends because you're running a club. You have to commit all your weekends to those events. And then it kind of, you don't have an, as much time to go fish for the national stuff. So it's hard to. Yeah, I mean, it makes it tough. And, like, it was fine when the, you know, we started out real small. And then once we started growing, like, I, you know, I was fishing it when we were small. And then we started getting a lot of people that I didn't know involved. And, like, I just had to back out of even fishing those events just because I didn't want there to ever be any kind of controversy if I did good in an event. You know, I just, I, yeah, I just didn't never want that to anybody to think anything. So, so I stopped fishing and and just ran them and i'm like man i just i just want to fish and and you know i <laughs> think i grinded it out for another two years after that and then i just i, I had to give it up but um you know hopefully one day i'll, I'll run another event or two I, I got some good ideas for some big events but i just haven't been able to put everything together yet yeah yeah and, and just to touch on what he said that is probably the any tournament director could probably agree. That's probably the hardest dilemma is even when you don't fish the event for what he said, you know, you don't want anybody thinking anything about it. So you don't fish the events, but it's still like plays in your head all the time. Like they could have done good in an area I already knew about. And then it's like, well, God, now I don't want to go back there because you know, somebody will start some stuff, you know, start questioning. Like, how'd you find out about the spot? And exactly. Like, yeah. And some folks just don't like to hear that their spots, common knowledge, like, <laughs> yeah. like, no, bro, your spot's not anything secret. You're probably the last one to know. You just did good there, but it is, it's a, it's a fun battle. No, it's not fun at all, but it's a battle. Well, uh, Ryan, yep. your turn, man. Tell the world, uh, who you are, where you're from, how you got, how you got in it. And then, how the uh wallpaper of checks came to be yeah so i would say probably five six years ago something like that i started kayak fishing um my name is ryan matalevich i'm from northeastern pennsylvania so um i actually committed to fishing a lot because pretty much everything around us is trash so <laughs> <laughs> i mean i know a lot of y'all heard about the wall and pole pack and that's about the best thing we got around us so yeah um yeah so i i mean it, we're fortunate we're only a couple hours from like upstate new york so we got like cayuga and uh, lake george is only a little ways away and then we have um ontario obviously so um even being in pa i'm so closer to ontario and, and all the upstate new york stuff than like erie which is a longer haul um but i mean that's really i started the on i got the kayaks and was just kind of messing around when my dad got one with me and uh we just started fishing like ponds and having fun and messing around and um 
we decided to do, I think it was Kentucky Lake, a Hobie event, which I had no idea, man. I was just a pond fisherman and we went down there and it was completely awful. I think I caught like one fish the whole time I was down there. I mean, that's and still I saying like, something on Kentucky Lake. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the Bass Open series. And then I think it was my, I fished that other, like I said, the, um, I forget what it was called. It was St. Clair, but it was that Canadian mixed breed border classic or whatever it was, border city classic. Yeah. I fished that in St. Clair and um, that kind of got me going. And then I just doing a little hybrid of mixture of things. And then I decided to fully commit the second year to KBF and had some close finishes whenever a top 10 and then, just kept going and kept grinding at it. Went to like all the Northern stuff. Didn't really go South too much and um, just got better and better and started figuring out more and more from each tournament I went to. And some, some advantages going back to the same tournaments, you know what I mean? Of the same locations and kind of getting some more time on those places and figuring stuff out and figuring out the baits. Cause everybody knows they have a million different baits, but you start finding those favorites. I mean, Casey never reveres from the shaky. <laughs> so he, he, he cracks about that all the time. But, yo, know, I don't know. That's another thing. I mean, a little off topic, but I mean, everybody says, I think one of the earliest events I fished was actually um, down in Casey's neck of the woods. Um, and I think I thought you won that one. Everybody said this was your first one, but I thought you won. Um, it was uh, what, what's the name of that? The, that one that has like the warm water side down in, in Virginia. I thought Lake, it was Anna. Kid, yeah, Lake Anna, right? You won that, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I did. I saw, yeah, I don't yeah, I don't know where yeah. I think I saw uh Dakota Lithium post that. I think that's where that kind of got started. I'm not sure why. Yeah. I, think it was I was like, no, he definitely beat me at Lake Anna. It's just been a while. <laughs> it's been a few years. You like definitely it. remember who takes your money. Like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was another tournament where they're on beds, not going too far off topic. Where I found some, I spent like half a day trying to catch a fish. And, um, but anyway, that hey, that's was, what we're uh, hoping for this weekend. Ago. That's yeah. what we're hoping for on Gunner's World. Like I want to stare at the all same over. fish all day. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the so. South's warming up right now. It sounds like it's happening everywhere. Yeah, Lake Murray was warming up. That's for sure. They were starting to move up. Casey saw that a lot more than what I was doing, but, um, they were definitely starting to pull up real, real shallow on Lake Murray and at the deep lake. So I would imagine Gunnersville would be right there. I hope so. Mm. Yeah, they pretty much stay shallow. So. Uh, well, so while we're on the, the topic of Lake Murray, because we're going to hit all sorts of stuff, because I want to I want to hear anytime I hear somebody that's like kicks ass on a shaky head, I need to like poke the bear on that because it's just not something in my arsenal. So we're definitely going to touch on that. But uh and if they were up shallow, we want to hear about all that too. But uh, either one of y'all that want to, whoever's got you know real good knowledge on it, uh, give us a layout. You know, tell tell anybody that like me knows nothing about it, what kind of lake it is, a little more detailed than Garrett already touched on. Either one of y'all that want to do it. Yeah, Casey, you can go first. Yeah, I mean, I haven't spent a lot of time in all the different areas of that lake, but I do know that it's just a very diverse fishery. I mean. You know, you were talking earlier about it being, like, similar to a Highland Reservoir, but, like, man, it's got everything. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's 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 got deep water. Um, there's a – unfortunately, I think they just they just drew it down, like, 10 feet to kill a bunch of grass. So, I think a lot of that is, is gone now. Hmm. But, um, I mean, there was a ton of grass. Um, there's still – there's still some deeper grass, but – um. But man, it's just it it's just got a little bit of everything. It's got crystal clear water. It's got it's got dirty water. Um, like I said, grass. I mean, docks. Like it, it yeah, for me. <laughs> there's nothing for, that for me. Have, right? It fishes similar too. to like Smith Mountain Lake, um, which which is right by me. So like that's that's why I like it so much. But I mean, <clears> it, it's got a little bit of everything. Yeah, it sounds like it's kind of a hybrid between the lowland and highland reservoir For sure. like up in the river it looks like it only gets like 20 foot deep up in the river um and you got a lot of those like slack water areas up, up in there that are kind of shallow water stuff uh, but then you got the other end of the lake where it's almost 200 foot deep and <laughs> you got steep drop-offs and that kind of stuff so Looks awesome. You got one. What for me? It's like one side of the lake, big green flag. The other side of the lake, giant red flags. 
<laughs> you'd be able to you would be able to guess where I would be just by sounds. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's like the current section too, right? So there's like all three. Like literally, there's like the fast water, like the like you can go to like the headwaters kind of feel, like right Ooh. at the dam, and then like there's the river up the end of there. I never went up that far. And then you get into the middle mix, and you have like the dirty water type, like backwater slick calm, like back bays. It has like some lay down structure and wood with all kinds of little fingers going everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. Lots of stuff to flip at, and then you get down towards the dam, and you got like that real clear water stuff, and um, that's like a blueback lake. So unlike uh, another lake I fished down there, um, which drawing a blank on it right now, they have giant <laughs> spots. Um, there's spots there that are up in the river and stuff, but down there, the, the those largemouth, a lot of them get out on in the summertime. It wasn't really happening when we were there, but they get real long and fat, but they're out there chasing like bluebacks around. So mm. summertime, like you'll see that lake is like all top water action. So it's all like big top water plugs and just working them real fast across the top and they just it's get awesome. blasted. And you don't know if you're going to catch a five pound, <laughs> six pound largemouth or a striper. It's like, yeah. Well, adding this one to the list, he had me <laughs> yeah. a top water. Yeah. Oh, it's a phenomenal top water fishery. You have to like post spawn like summertime, but they're scattered around and like all, like all over the place. So like you can be throwing it forever, but as soon as they come around, even right now when I was down there, Casey, I don't know if you saw it, but like at my Airbnb and stuff and the back of the creek pockets, like I'd be sitting there and I just like, poosh, like they are so violent. And they were like hitting, like they're coming up out of the water, like even now, like this early, I was seeing them come up. Mm -hmm. I didn't catch anything on top water, but I'm sure if you were in the right scenario, thrown in the right spot, you could have made it happen. Yeah. Then maybe like a week later or two, like after it's warmed up just a little bit more. It's almost like that old fisher, yeah, I mean, fisherman's things... tale. You should have been here yesterday. It's you should have been here two <laughs> weeks from now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that made me fish, start where i where i did start was I, I pushed in the back of the pocket and uh or the back of the creek and i, I just stood up and I, there was just bait all around me and i pushed mm. it all the way to the back and then it had nowhere else to go so it took off past me and as soon as it did that man i mean it just was fish after fish busting on it and i was like holy crap and i ended up <laughs> catching two like back to back and i was like man i guess i gotta start here like I had I had another plan that was going to be kind of my my day two plan, but I was like, I guess you know after seeing that, I was like, man, I, this is where I got to be in the morning. I don't know if I've ever heard about anybody doing that, like corralling the bait into a pocket and then. That's that's the way <laughs> I mean, it that, happened. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, I don't know it was, why. It was pretty like, wild how it happened. <laughs> yeah, I don't like I. I know this isn't how he approached it, but in my head, I just see him like standing up in his kayak, like <laughs> yeah, making a big on. shadow. <laughs> like, come on! <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't mean to do it that way, but that's exactly what happened, and it was it was pretty crazy to watch. Like, I literally like saw him running away from me, and then they had nowhere else to go, so they they went past me, and uh, yeah, it was just. And it was just fish busting. <laughs> yeah. That's definitely that. Awesome. I mean, that, that's it, dude. Like I seen that same every pocket I went into seemed to have a ridiculous amount of bait. And I remember from last year when I was there, uh, my buddy was like was telling me this deal where he went to the back of one of the pockets and he said it was just stacked full of bait, like real shallow in the corner, and there was just a line of like giant five pounders just staring at the bait. But it was like it was way cleaner last year than it was this year. And yeah. he's like, he couldn't get him to bite like anything, but he was like literally looking they were like guarding it in the corner, just waiting to eat it. And like, this all hanging out, like just watching it in the corner, but they wouldn't eat it. <laughs> it's like rolling up on a gang fight. It sounds yeah, like. Like, <laughs> like it is, yeah. stare down like, Oh God, let's Some go. Some Mexican here. standoff. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, so just cause you kind of mentioned it, go ahead and just jump into, uh, into your pre-fishing, you know, how it went. Uh, like you said, like you had a, a different plan going in, um, Casey, if you want to start with your pre-fishing, you know, approach to everything, tell us about it. Yeah. So, I mean, I've been, I've been there the past two years, we fished a tournament there and I've kind of just done the same thing. Um, and I've al always done decent in the tournaments. I think I've cash checks both years. Um, you know, nothing, nothing super impressive, but you know, pr pretty, pretty decent limits. And, um, uh, that was kind of my plan going in. I figured it, it kind of set up the same way, you know, same time of year, same everything. So during practice, uh, I just kind of ran a bunch of stuff that I, that I fished previously, checked it out, um, you know, caught some fish, basically fishing, uh, 
docks, you know, um, out a little bit deeper, you know, from, from anywhere from, I guess I say deeper, but, uh, I don't know, 12, 12 to eight, foot. um, yeah. and I, I just started fishing all that stuff. And, you know, I got some bites here and there. I know I didn't do as good as I was hoping during practice. You know, I didn't see any big fish, but, but I was getting bites and, you know, catching some, some 16 and 17 inches. And I was like, you know, the, all it takes is uh, all I figured it'd take anyways was, you know, one, one or two bigger fish and, you know, that puts you up close to 90 and yeah, at least get a good check. Um, and, uh, you know, so I, I did that all during practice and just kind of scouted new water, just, just searched a bunch of new water, just ran a bunch of stuff, market brush piles as well. Um, and then so were you looking kind of more for uh, like pre-spawn type of stuff? Like what kind of water temperatures were you finding that? Yeah, so that so like I actually went water? out. I fished. I fished Saturday and Sunday before the event. Um, I drove down there, and it was. I think it was Saturday. There was water temperatures fifty four degrees. Um, okay. I saw a couple fish up shallow, and I saw a couple fish on beds. And wow. I didn't really, you know, that never really went through my mind anymore other than like I saw a couple fish there. And if I, you know, I'd definitely check it out during the tournament to see if they were still there. But like, I mean, it's 54 degree water. Like I wasn't expecting any kind of spawn kind of thing to be really yeah, like, happy. Like a huge um, wave to push up or anything. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, I went back to work and then I, I went back down and and practiced again for uh thursday and friday and friday it, it ended up getting i mean it got up to 85 degrees i think it, i don't remember it got really warm the water temperature was up in like 67 i think is the highest Holy i saw crap. 67 or 68 <clears throat> and I, I still wasn't really thing i did see a few more beds and stuff but i didn't see a ton of fish up shallow um granted i wasn't really looking uh, yeah up super shallow either but um i had i had went back in one of these pockets and it was getting close to the end of practice and i was just kind of just really messing around and i just flipped up next to they call it the bank grass down there i don't know what it is but um hmm. flipped up next to the grass and and i got a bite and i was trying not to set the hook on on much many fish that day so so i didn't set the hook and then I pulled, you know, I got my worm back and I, and I threw back over there again and well, to, a, to another spot and got another bite like 10 feet away. So I'm like, wow. And I did set the hook on that one and, and it was a better fish, you know, it was like 17 and three quarters. And um, I'm like, okay, so that was, that was kind of in the back of my mind um, the whole time. Yeah. But I was still planning to do kind of the same old stuff. Um, you know, that I, that I've been doing in practice. And then that's when I went to the back of that pocket and saw all those fish. And, and, you know, that's when I decided I was going to start there. Well, come, come first thing tournament morning, you know, we got, we got a freaking ton of rain that night. Um, I go back there that morning and it's just freaking nothing but mud. And I was, I was seeing fish on the live and seeing all the bait still back there, but I just couldn't get anything to bite. So I went right back to where I got those two bites in practice and threw over there, caught one, threw over there again, caught another one. And they were better fish. You know, they were, I, I don't remember, they were 17 or 18 or something. And I was like, Man, there's, there's got to be something to this. So I just worked that whole pocket, just throwing at the edge of that grass. And man, I just kept getting bites and bites. And, and when I came out of that pocket, I, it was a little bit clearer water right there. And I threw up, or it was a little bit shallower, I guess. And I could see, I could see a male on the bed and he, and he hit my worm. And I'm like, dude, they're, it just clicked right then. I'm like, they're, they're freaking up on beds right now. And yeah. uh, I just ran that, that, all the grass line that I could see back there. And, and just, I mean, just started whacking them pretty good. That's awesome. that's awesome, man. Yeah. So it sounds like yeah, the I mean, big wave ended up coming after that warm front. 
came through. Or, well, I, I've got yeah, a, I've I mean, got a, it, it, you know, it, it, go ahead. I was just gonna say, like, uh, I, I'm, I'm save, I'll save the question for once we get more into the tournament days about that spot in particular. Uh, but Ryan, real quick, if you want to hit on your your pre fishing before I forget this question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, no, I started I'm... kind of um, in the middle of the lake more. And uh, it's a spot I fished history in the past and um, went there. That's where I spent a lot of my pre fish. I went out there the first day and um, we caught them. I caught them pretty good. And but th I never found a spot that I could just like catch fish on. So I was covering like a ton of different water and there'd be like one here, then another hundred yards. And I find one and like I just couldn't find a spot where I could get multiple bites like in one one time. And it was just inconsistent stuff, which um for those that do know me i'm more of like an electronics fisherman and like i kind of like to know that my fish are like know that i can catch them and know that i'm in like a, a consistent spot i have a hard time fishing for five bite kind of thing um but uh i was catching fish but not like i wanted to spent like my whole prefix trying to expand on the area that i was used to but um that's where i ended up going on day one of the tournament and during pre-fish and i hammered a big one it was like seven and three quarter pounds it was 23 and a half inches um Shugs. and then uh i'm like all right well this is what, like i tried a couple different things and i really didn't find anything that i liked better and i said well i guess this is kind of where i'm gonna go uh, i did well here in the past and it's a very vast spot where there's like a lot of water to cover there's not it's not like tight pockets it's like more main lake features so like when you're running from like points and marking brush piles and little spots where you're finding fish i mean you've hit one spot and then you got like a 30 minute 20 minute run to the next spot so like you can eat up your tournament day pretty quick if you get caught up on a spot too long. And uh, that's what I ended up doing. I had a good couple bites first thing on Saturday. Um, I think I ended up with like 74 inches for four fish. Um, my fifth fish I had, it was like 17 and a half, 18. I mean, I obviously we're guessing, right? But it came up out of the water. Like I was, it was, I was on a spinning reel and my net, I was rotating between like three different rods and I had my net placed bad in my kayak. And I, it was like underneath my other rod. So then I grabbed, like, I'm like, oh, it's not that big, whatever. So I went to flip it in the boat with the spinning rod, hit the side of the kayak and shook the hook and swam away. And that was, that would have been enough to get me like probably in like 94, 93, 94 inches for the day. I'm like, that, and I'm like, no big deal. I'll catch another one. And it never happened. Never caught the other fish. So that when was you were, Saturday. When, when you were talking about like in, in your pre-fish and kind of searching, when you were having to run around because you you know weren't finding like one area that was kind of mm -hmm. loaded up, were you at least finding a pattern where it was like same bait, you know, like yeah, yeah. like jigs on a brush pile, but like the same thing? You were just having to run yeah, and hit so, the same thing everywhere. Yeah, the, like the rumor mill goes around everything during pre fish and stuff. Everybody's hammering them on crankbaits and chatterbaits, and that's always what seems to be going down. And that just I'm just not that guy. Kind of, <laughs> it just never happens for me that way. So, um, I caught like all my fish and. I mean, I caught them on drop shots. I caught them on small shaky heads. I caught them on like 10 inch shaky heads. I mm. caught them on literally um, five different variations of worms. Really, I didn't. I didn't really catch them on. I got one on a jerk bait that was like 1975 um, that I got offshore. I thought that was like oh, I got fired up on that. I'm like, all right, I seen one chasing bait, caught on a jerk bait. I'm like, this is my thing. I can catch them out here doing this. And then I spent like another half of the day, and I never got another bite. <laughs> um, so I'm like, well. Hold on, this is clicked that. for me. You had 73 and three quarter inches with four fish. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. So. Yeah, that fifth one would have been huge for you. Yeah, which it definitely would have gave me a better overall weekend. So, um, but anyway, things happen, you know, and uh, I got kind of a little frazzled by it. My dad finished well. He ended up, I think, in like 11th or 12th yeah. place. I was going to ask um, you if that was you know, dad or brother. Oh, yeah, that was my dad. He did pretty well that day. Um, and he was doing the opposite of like kind of I found out after what I was doing. He was like up shallow fishing and I was uh, still off offshore. And I think it was like, it's that weird like temperamental spot, right? Because you got fish that are out deep and fish that are up shallow and in between. And it's like you like kind of that's why like I mentioned I did like a hybrid pattern and I was fishing like main lake like points right because we had that cold front come in and it's worked for me in the past i was fishing like little rock piles and brush piles on like main lake points and i was getting fish to bite doing that and then the docks can be really good 
um, when the fish push up, but that cold front usually will kind of keep them away. He turned out that he was fishing docks and he was catching them and I just didn't really see anything happen on the dock. So I spent mm. way more time offshore and I was looking for brush piles and I had some marks, but again, they were very far and few between and like I'd keep running from point to point, but they were so far away to do in a, in a kayak that it was just pretty challenging. I mean, I was um, going to say like, if you, if you're somebody that likes to fish points, this lake has got plenty of options. Yes. Like yeah. if you've never looked at this lake on a map, folks, go ahead and pull it up. You could, you could fish this place for months out of a kayak and not hit every good looking point on this thing. I mean, they, no. they all are like, they look like textbook when you're learning about like main lake points, secondary points. This lake has yep. thousands of them. <laughs> like, this is yeah. insane. Oh, there's this loaded with points and I mean, it's just got rock piles on them and man, they look yep. good. I've, I've mm. fished them before and I've, I've never been able to do really good on them um, this time of year. I, I feel like that really good bite is a little bit earlier in the year. And but, yeah, but yeah. I mean, they're still out there, but it's just, but in the, the other thing about yeah. the lake is that I mentioned the striper and stuff, right? So like the like the live sonar can like bite you there because there's so many different fish swimming around that you're trying to mess with and get the bite and <laughs> yeah. stuff that like it's not all bass, so it, it can be a challenge of like identification of what it is and what you're fishing for and what's there and what's not there. And um you can kind of get used to what they how they act and respond. But I mean that the big one of the biggest fish I caught was uh, in like 23 feet of water, 24 feet of water. And it was suspended up only five foot down. And I'm like, oh, it's definitely a striper. I just saw a big mark coming across the screen. I literally threw something on top of it. It fell right down the bottom and bit it. It was like a like a 22 inch fish. So, and that that wasn't the biggest one I caught, but it was one, another big one. And I'm yeah. like, this is ridiculous. Like, so, and that same thing I caught him on the jerk bait, but then I couldn't replicate <clears> that, you know. And then I'd get another one to bite and it'd be a striper. I'm like, man, this is this is just kind of <laughs> tough. So anyway, day to two, tell the difference between them. The day two that I did well was complete surprise to me because uh, like Casey, like I mentioned to him, it was uh, significantly dirtier this year than it was in the past years. And I liked the clear water better. I'm not a dirty water guy. I'm like a big guy. I'll be in the clearest water of the lake every time. Um, and uh, I, I said, well, like I got to get closer to the dam, I guess, to find some water. And I ended up looking around at some other launches and stuff. And I ended up going up closer to like the clear water because I was up the lake quite a bit and I just wanted mm -hmm. to move closer to the dam and that's what I did and I just got towards a little bit of clear water and it was a place I never even fished before and I think on these kind of lakes it typically helps me because a lot of times I'll go out pre-fishing and I'll do way better than I do after I go to her to replicate it whether I beat the fish up or hit the same fish or whatever and uh, I never saw this area I kind of just looked at it on a actually one of our contacts at old town um, sent me a link with like a, a trial for a, a new app. That's basically what was what I'm trying to think what the, what is the name of it? It's the, um, the one boat network app. It's basically mm -hmm. the hummingbird. Yeah. App. The hummingbird app. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And I got that and I started looking around on it and I was like playing with the trial that actually the, the, after the first night of the tournament, and I was looking around at some different maps and trying stuff out and trying to see, like I said, oh, well, this looks good. This looks like a lot of the stuff I'm fishing, but a lot more condensed into one spot. Um, so I said, whatever, like, I got, it's real hard for me to leave this box. I know there's good, good fish here, but I'm going to send it, you know, and it was, I, that's what I did. I went to this spot. I launched out there and uh, I didn't even know. I had a couple things I looked at that I started on on the map from the night before and um it went there and it turned out right off the bat i caught a 1975 and then i had another one that was probably like just as big if not bigger and it came off on me like right next to the same spot it was on the rod and it got like over my shoulder and like it was just in a bad spot it was on a spinning rod and i was all hooked up, tangled up weird and the kayak was facing the wrong direction and it was kind of like one of those weird casts that i probably should have <laughs> yeah. better lined up for and it came off and i was like damn man and I said, whatever, I shook it off and kept just running around the, the lake, going to the different stuff that I kind of marked. And what's so nice about that is the, the app that helped me mark this stuff is that one boat network app is basically like what people most know is like Navionics and the chart viewer. It has all that, but with the hummingbird maps and it has also like all the rock piles and all the different stuff you can see and you can drop waypoints on it right through your phone. So like I could just pull my phone up and start running waypoints off stuff that I looked at because you can scroll around all the time and like look at stuff and have you, but if you don't actually have like the waypoints and mark the little spots that you want to look at, it's just a really convenient, nice feature. So um, that's pretty that's, cool. 
thanks yeah, for sending that's me awesome. that. Yeah, that, that's so that's what I ended up doing. I <laughs> ran around that lake and um, I ended up catching them, most of them on points offshore, just like I was doing the first day. And then the couple bigger fish that I caught, um, it was just getting warmer and I've seen them start to move shallower and shallower. And I ran up like super shallow and I caught my two big ones for the tournament on day two, right on the backside of the docks. So they, they pushed up shallow. They were getting ready to, to stage to get on bed. There's like a little spawning cove there. And it was yeah. like the first dock coming out of deep water right before the spawning cove. And they kind of set up on it and two docks back to back. I got a 20 and then a 1975. God, I just That's need solid. that kind of luck one day, just one day. <laughs> yeah. But I definitely wasn't crushing them. Like I didn't. I probably had eight fish on day two, so like I didn't. I just. They were the right ones. ones. So yeah, it's all that matters sometimes. So, you know, back back to Casey to expand on. So you you know you you killed it on day one. Um, I mean, you killed it on day two. Uh, you, you were talking about you know sticking to this area, you know, fishing this grass line. Like how how big of an area are you talking about? Like just general size. I mean, it's pretty big. Um, it's it's the back of a big creek arm. Um, I didn't know, like, the first day I made it maybe a quarter of the way out. And, you know, I was just catching fish the whole time, basically. So, like, it seemed like once I got further out, the fish started getting a little bit smaller. Um mm-hmm. And then and fewer and far between. I didn't know if that was a timing thing. I, I didn't know exactly what it was, you know. And again, that first day, I couldn't really, I couldn't see many of the fish on beds, but but I knew they were there, um, you know. So I really didn't know what to expect going into day two because, like, you know, after doing, I, I burned myself a lot of times going to this back to the same area doing the same things, and. Um, I just, it was just so good. I I had to at least go through it. So my plan was on day two to do the exact same thing, but maybe just like kind of move through it a little quicker and get to some newer water a little bit faster in the day. And um, like I started out, the the fish weren't quite as big that morning, you know, still catching some decent fish and, uh, you know, put up, put up a respectable limit and then, you know, kind of just, kept upgrading from there but you know the the good thing about the next day was that water really i mean it still wasn't clear clear but like i could see see the beds i could see the fish um i I spooked so many of them and you know i I sat there and and sight fished for for quite a few i had found one the day before that i that i couldn't catch and um and i went back to it and ended up catching it and and that was kind of at the end of my run um that first day so i just kind of continued on from there and you know kept seeing fish and and sitting there messing with them and and until i could get them to bite and you know by by the end of the day i i had worked probably more than halfway out of that creek arm and uh and started you know well i actually came across it, it was actually pretty cool how it worked it was like I guess it was like the last 30 minutes of the day, 20 minutes, you know, left to fish. And I, I just got, I just got an upgrade. I think it was a 17. I think I still must've had like a 16 or something on the board. Um, I can't remember exactly, but, but um, I, I come across this, this bed and it's got, it's got a male and female sitting on it. And I mean, the female looked to me to be, like 21 or something you know it was it was Jeez. 20 or 21 and then uh you know the male looked to be about 17 something and i i, I went right over top of them before i saw them and then, you know they kind of ran away and i think like now it's like what well, it was 15 minutes left and um like okay so i, I went and fished fished up a little bit and then i was like all right turned around and came back made a long cast over there nothing and I kind of just like eased up on it and I saw the male still sitting there. And I, mean, I was, I was standing up on my seat at this point in my autopilot and I just <laughs> yeah. dropped straight down onto it and it freaking hits it. And I just set the hook and it was this like 17 something, another upgrade. 
And I'm like, okay, yeah. like this is freaking awesome. So I was like, I, I, at that point I was torn. I was like, man, I know there's a big fish there. You know, there's like 10 minutes left. What, like, what, do I move away for five minutes, wait for that female to come back? What do I do? In my head, I'm like, no, just keep moving. You've, you've already found like three or four fish right in this line. So I just kept moving down the bank and I just happened to random cast to a dock in between going, going around the docks and uh friggin' 20, 20 and a quarter, I guess it was just smashes it seven minutes left to go. I get a picture and you know, that, that was a, that was a four, four inch upgrade for me just about. And, uh, Jeez. I didn't know at the time, but yeah, it moved me into second place and, I do when that fish hit it, I, cause I, I had a couple 19s that day, but you know, I had a 20 and a 21 the day before and I, you know, I needed something like that. And it just, yeah. that one just was like pure luck. <laughs> like it was, it was <laughs> completely different than what I had been doing. And just like that one random cast, you know? So touching on, uh, when, when you were catching them before you could really see them, you know, day one and, and this for both of you, cause y'all were both fishing so so different um what was the bite like was it highly aggressive more of a mush mouth thing where you could just one minute feel your bait and the next minute just you know that weight on the end of it what what were y'all feeling with that because i had a conversation with somebody the other day and you know they thought that this time of year it's very highly aggressive bites and i was you know, like on the contrary, no, a lot of the bites that I've gotten so far this year or in previous spawn years, it especially when you can't see them and you're not expecting it. It's sometimes it's they're there and you don't even realize it. It's just been a, just a quick, just, and then they've got a hold of it. Pick it up and hold it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) What what were y'all feeling? For me, it was just, uh, I was getting the the tick, you know, I'd feel like the thunk, like just like a little quick and then I it was there and that's basically pretty much all of them that I had all day. A couple of them I would just like the I'd see the line kind of going down and then it would see it start going to the side and it would just be in its mouth and and you, and you were I'd fishing a drop a, shot, right? A drop shot and a shaky head and I mean I was I was again I was throwing a, like a Senko. Um, I, I basically I was just fishing all worm profiles but in like six different ways. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. That's yeah, something so that I've never I mean, thought about. I usually am doing like. It's 10 different things and none of them are at all anything similar. Yeah. That's a, that's actually a really, that's something that everybody can take away from this to, to try. Maybe like if you're, you're getting them on a, a, a some kind of worm or creature bite, maybe try that same thing five different ways to maximize your, your time in the water, you know, your bait in the water time. It's a good idea. What was you going to say, Casey? I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. So I was just going to say the bites kind of were the same for me. Like the, there was a, couple that i remember specifically um you know i i had my line pretty tight and all of a sudden i just see i didn't feel anything i just see my line swimming into the grass and i'm like what the heck i set the hook and you know it it was on there and then and then after that it was uh, and this was day one but it was like you know you just feel that tap and and it start swimming away they were they were actually eating it really good on day one um (laughs) You know, I, I didn't really miss many fish at all. And day two, it was like they, they would just like pick up the tail of it. And but a lot of times, I you know, I'd set the hook and the tail would be missing on the worm or something. But I could throw back in there and, and get it to eat again. Um, that's that's actually one of my, my favorite like telltale signs when I'm this time of year when I'm casting. And, you know, maybe I haven't seen bed yet or don't know where they're at. It, it never fails and it's usually i usually do it with a senko but you'll start pitching senkos up and just watching it just you know left or right away from you but they've always just got the base of it you know never mouthing it and i'm like oh that's the males they're spawning you know they're up here yeah. about to do their thing they're moving stuff away from their beds yeah, yeah and then man, i get all excited and pull yeah. out a frog because oh. that makes sense <laughs> The, the bites maybe not be were, were not like super aggressive but again I, I'm, I'm sure they were they were for the guys throwing like the chatter baits and the crank baits from what I've heard oh, yeah um but uh they fought very very good like they were really really strong fighting fish down there um I don't know if it's because the ones I was catching are like the shad chasers that are out in the main lake constantly running yeah, like almost roaming, like, almost, but, like all day yeah but those <laughs> fish man 
I was so blessed on day two to be able to land those fish. It, it's just unbelievable, man. Like, cause I the the two big ones I caught, I was on um, I was fishing with like ten pound sunline, like fluorocarbon. I mean, with like I had a braid like F or the SX one braid on it with just like a ten pound fluorocarbon leader, and mm -hmm. uh, I was fishing around docks, right, which is scary with big fish. <laughs> yeah. Um, and a couple of them, man, they literally just took off like rockets they were in between the other one there was a bass boat fishing right down for me in the one spot and he was like watching me he's like you need a net buddy I'm like no man <laughs> and then i was like I, I ended up like grabbing it with my hand because it was in between like six different dock posts and i was like laying on my back like floating underneath the dock in my kayak <laughs> trying to get it out of the dock and ended up grabbing it you know and i let out a couple like an ellie screams when i caught that one yeah I um, but uh yeah and that happened to two fish man so i was just like this is unreal so like it just made it was like that epic battle where i'm like yeah and then my wife's like yeah don't you never carry a gopro though you're always too lazy to use a gopro man i was that. fixing to say it'd been great to have yeah. that like onboard footage or from like the bass boat perspective because you know yeah. like they they catch one in the docks and they're just kind of there they're like yeah but imagine looking over and seeing this guy on a kayak just like limboing under the under dock. the freaking dock yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pull, pulling a five pounder out from under the dock like literally yeah, yeah that's yeah. hilarious but dude the, the thing is on that man like people don't realize from a kayak perspective right like i in my mind like i'm real into like i love like i, I use nrx pluses which are pricey but like that feel man that parabolic rod like it's just so and I'm, casey can relate to it in the sense with um having a spinning rod in a kayak like it just gives you like such an advantage that people don't realize that like when you get a fish right to the kayak right and the rod's loading up like it can take off and run and bounce and it give you time to like lean on it and net it if you have like a stiff stiff bait caster and you get that a fish like right to the thing like yeah you can catch them on it but if you're not planning on trying to flip it right into the kayak and you're messing around with that net that rod unloads so fast that that like hook can just pop off in like a split second and I just feel so much more comfortable landing those like bigger fish when, when there's no obstructions or anything. For me, it's like either spinning rod into the net or like I'm trying to just straight boat flip them with my bait caster. But like trying to net with a bait caster for me is just like it's gone south way too way more than it, it's been positive. Oh, I, I definitely agree with you. I've I've had more, you know, on that the heavier bait caster sides like my flipping stick, frog rod, punching rod. Yeah, I've learned that bites on those don't go in a net they come yeah. i will break that rod in half getting that fish in the boat yeah. before i you, try you, that net <laughs> guaranteed me you have such a better chance in my opinion just flipping right in the boat most of the time i'm flipping those heavier rods i'm standing up in the kayak and the benefit of like the autopilot which casey obviously runs too is like standing up and like he's just so stable it's like the most stable kayak i've ever been in and i've been in a lot of different kayaks and you just can like sit there and like bed fishing with it. If you have to do what he's doing, it's just like nothing's better. I mean, you have that motor down in the, the, the hole there. You just not like a big obstruction when you're getting up shallow. Um, it kicks up easy. You don't have to worry about ripping it off the front of your bow. And like you can stand up on your kayak, stand up on the seat. It's just and see perfectly and just kind of flip like you're like in a bass boat. And it's just it's an unbelievable fishing platform. For sure. Yeah, I think oh, several. Yeah, of I mean, I, I, I wish the video I had was a little boats. better. I wish the video I had was a little better of me standing up in that seat, but like, dude, it, it's so awesome to just be able to get up there. You're, I mean, you're probably at that point, you may be even higher up than in a bass boat, but like your vantage point is just awesome for, for spotting them. Uh, bedded fish. That's one thing I miss about my, my native. Uh, when I had my Titan 12, I had like three inches of riser already on that giant tall seat and I'd stand in the seat yeah. bed fishing with that thing. And it is, it's like, like the guys you see out, I can't remember where in the country they do it. I think it's on one of the great lakes, but they'll go set the ladders out like three oh, foot deep yeah. in the water and you'll sit on top of the ladder. That's, that's what you feel like in these boats, in these yeah. the autopilots and the Titan standing in the seat. You feel like you're, you, you know, it's like standing on a solo skiff up on the viewing platform, yeah. push pulling around. I actually stepped it up a little bit and did that. I, uh, my business partner, I told him what I was doing and like, I was like stepping on my seat and I actually broke one of my, my seats just from like jumping up and down on it a lot. Yeah. So I rigged it back together and old town got me another one that I use for like most of the time, but I fixed my old one and he actually took like a, like a, like a woodworking tabletop, like, like, like a coffee tabletop and bolted it and put like grip tape on the top of it and mounted it on the seat 
and I actually yeah, it's like a go. straight up casting platform. So actually, <laughs> I, 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 like I used it. that. I used that yeah. at an event up north last year when it was a bed fishing tournament, and I literally was standing up and I was like higher than I am in my in my bass boat when I was just like rolling across the top, and I could it was it was incredible being able to just move around and like bed fish with like my remote and like just literally just sit there. And, like, there. It was, it was Dude, ridiculous. that's awesome. I mean, like, uh, I'm waiting for somebody to come out with something. I mean, Vibe has the one kayak, I guess, that, that has a platform wow. on the back of its seat. Yeah, uh, the I can't think of it, but uh, they do. And it actually, the, you say what you want about that kayak. I think it's completely crap, but that little sheer fold water, down. Is that what yeah, it is? that's it. Yeah, The fold down seat to the standing platform is actually really stable. It was a really cool idea. Yeah, that's a I, cool idea. Like, I, I feel like more. I, I thought the micro skiffs were going like to take off um, with solo skiff and like, uh, oh, God, uh, Robert Weicker, as yeah. much as he was promoting those and doing real good in them. I really thought those were going to take off. And that's when we would see more of that, like, standing platform set up. But yeah. I don't know. Seems to be working standing in the old seats. Yes. I mean, for, yeah. for uh, some yeah. of you not so uh, talented woodworking guys out there, just take a two by 10 and lay it across the seat. You'll be fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but, uh, so, yeah, no, just kind of to recap, though, man, y'all y'all had two, you know, excellent days out there. Casey's day one, 98 and a half inches, uh, a 21, a 20 and, you know, a handful of other really good fish, you know, fantastic. So you went back to the to the same area and you approached it the same way and um, you know was able to come out on day two with 93 and three quarters and like you said that last fish you said it was like a four inch upgrade i mean that was a huge move like you were probably what like right outside of the top 10 before that i'm not sure I, yeah i'm not exactly sure i was i wasn't really keeping up with the leaderboard i, I feel like i was at some point i was i was like seventh eighth or something I, I i yeah i may have dropped even further than that i don't know um but but yeah i mean that big old it, hole it, it was last big minute. for sure yeah and, and then ryan you know uh one thing i was going to ask you you know from your you had an excellent day one you know just shy of that one fish that would have really shaken everything up uh going into day two did you like learn your your like your mistake with your net and make sure that wasn't an issue well i guess not because i lost that other one but for a different stupid <laughs> reason but, but uh i still i was able to recover and catch enough fish but no i did i started netting every fish then and like i said i got like almost like it was early in the day when i missed that fifth one and i never think nothing came after that and it was just um i i really didn't think too much of it i was being quick and i just wanted to move on to the next fish I'm like oh it's not a tank whatever i'm gonna flip it in but it was still a quality 17 18 inch fish probably you know but it didn't look like one of those real giants and i thought i'd be okay getting it in and it wasn't that it was just the hook like it was that one i think was on a drop shot so like when i pulled it up in like it was just like the hook just bent out when it fell down in but what, what, what size drop shot tight. hooks your preference i just use i use like a 1-0 mosquito light is what i use um yeah i like them small yeah but i a real real tiny one um the owner makes the best one in the in the business, in my opinion. The one oh mosquito light by owner, and they're cheap. You can get like a fifty pack for a couple bucks, and they're just incredible hooks. And I mean, I've caught plenty of six pound small smallmouth, five pound smallmouth, giant large mouth, all on that little tiny hook. I mean, I have people all the time when they see me take out the like the little one o's or number ones. And they're like, "That's too small of a hook." I mean, like, have you ever ever looked at fly fishermen? Yeah. Like. Do you see what they catch with that little bitty hook? You shut up. This is gonna work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they work, man. That's what it sure. does. <laughs> yeah, I'm the opposite. I, I throw like a three out, four out on my drop shot, but I'm also yeah. usually throwing a pretty big worm on there. But um, yeah. man, I use that one out mosquito light on like the big robo worms. Like it makes absolute yeah. no sense. Even when I look at it, when I cast it out, I'm like like you think of a Texas rig and like your your hook point and at the percentage down the bait the hook point comes out and you're like okay the fish can only miss it by this much and then you you throw yeah. a you know six and a half inch robo worm on a <laughs> number one drop shot hook and you're like so this fish has ninety five percent of a chance to screw this up for me and yeah. somehow they still eat it good you those know? right ones just swallow it though man and they like, do 
I, I like I'll go like I'll throw like on that one oh mosquito light like I'll go up I'll even throw like like six inch worms like you know like I don't like seven inch worms like the like I'll go up that size and um nowhere to lot that it was a Kissimmee like last year not this year I didn't make it down I was too busy with work but my dad did pretty well down there the one day and uh he was actually catching them on a one oh mosquito light hook with a zoom old monster on it holy a cow worm, <laughs> just nose hooked with a one hook and he was what? pulling just wrecking fish them fish. yeah <laughs> I'm and I was just try. laughing. I'm like, this is unbelievable. Like, of course he does. Because <laughs> my buddies and I all laugh because my dad would like just come out with these random. I'm like, you're ridiculous. That's not going to win. Then he'll start catching them. Like, I'm real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like that, that would almost like the bait would just like fly off of that little hook. Like, oh, you're yeah, definitely probably more like lobbing that one just than you are. It out there. Yeah, just <laughs> it in there. But no, I mean, so you don't need a giant hook to catch them. I mean, for me, the, the bigger hook sizes are like if you're fishing in around cover and docks you might want something if you need to be able to muscle the fish out because a lot of times with those little hooks you're not getting like full penetration like through their lip like their skin hooked inside the mouth and and that's where that rod is so important and that's why yeah. that i i'm like a medium light guy on those like on my drop yes. rods and if you have anything like medium medium heavy and you have those little hooks they'll rip out every time yeah i agree it's fun too because when you're throwing them on like medium medium light the one pounder, you're like, oh, it's a five, it's a five. It's not. It's like twelve inches. Uh, but then, then you really know when you've got a good one because that poor little rod, like, just doubled over. Oh, dude, it takes every little bit of that rod over. to get that in. Yeah, that's. I mean, dude, I'll tell you, like, I'm like I said, I'm I'm not the fishing around me is not the best, but I'm like three hours and I make multiple trips up to Ontario and I go up to the St. Lawrence and having that medium light in those like five and six pound smallmouth, like. On that medium light, my bad last year I was up there and I had a I think it was a 27 and a half pound bag for five um <sighs> smallmouth and they're all on like that medium light rod and dude it is unbelievable. And then, like it gets to the point where like you laugh because of the tournament. So it's all in perspective, right? Where you're at. Like a 14 inch fish could be a huge one if you need that fifth fish. And um up there, like you get like threes and fours, you're like, oh, it's a dink, and you're boat flipping with the spinning rod. <laughs> 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 you know? Because like they're not like those giant fives and sixes. <clears throat> but uh yeah it's just it's unreal up there doing that so um that's awesome well great great tournament guys and you know congrats for uh you know continuing to get the start of the year rolling around uh well what do y'all got next uh i know me and casey kind of talked before the show uh what y'all's next event y'all got coming up yeah I got gunnersville this weekend um Whoop. Go. hopefully the weather turns a little bit better Please. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, we're going to have a lot of rain Thursday and Friday, and then it'll cool off. And it looks like it's just going to be sunny, bluebird skies, but 50 degrees Saturday and Sunday. So it's like the worst possible post frontal. <sighs> oh, I know. <laughs> but what, what about you, you Ryan? I'm okay. With that. <clears throat> so, a lot of times. So I can benefit like, in a tough tournament, you know, like yeah, just throwing a damn shaky head somewhere, man, getting, <laughs> getting five good bites when everybody else is out there throwing a chatterbait, not getting bit or whatever. Yeah. But we'll see. How I'm, a, I'm gonna throw a shaky head on just because he Casey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't, <laughs> be, I don't, I don't want him to be the a, only one now. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> throw a shaky head all weekend. Casey, just... in drop, Casey in the shaky head, I think, is me is me in a in a in a drop shot. Basically, I don't think I ever ever go. I can be in Florida and I have a drop shot tied on. It doesn't matter where I'm at. So it's just yeah, like one of my I mean, go to confidence baits. Drop I mean, drop shot for me too, man. But like the shaky head just just steps it up for the, from the drop shot. But yeah, I I always have a drop shot tied on as well. So yeah, I think I was reading so... something on last year about like how fifty percent of the tournaments or something are one like major tournaments are one on a drop shot or checks are cashed with drop shots like man i had two really good years <clears throat> with it and then it just like disappeared for me and i it's like i forgot how to do it it's so weird i was i loved it for like two years and then come the next spring like i could not get bit on a drop shot and now i still cannot make it happen consistently i do not know what happened <clears throat> I think that number might be growing because of uh, live scope too. Like well, I mean, yeah. more tournament, more and more tournaments are being one on drop shots with live scope. 
Well, yeah, that's like, oh, look, fish drop bait on them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, you speaking next tournament though, I think uh, Potomac was what I was on my radar, but I'm kind of itching now, and I'm thinking I might go to St. Clair because that's early. But they're doing mm. that super early, man. Like it's gonna be like there might you're gonna be, be breaking ice, ice for that one. <laughs> yeah, there's gonna be ice on the dang place. Um, so you're it'll just, be a you're gonna have time, a couple but... holes bored in the ice around it to slide your kayak between them. <laughs> have you ever fished it that early? I never fish it that early. No, I've been, I fish it like two or three times, but never that early. I, I want to find somebody that's got some, some knowledge on it that early kind of leading up to that tournament so we can talk about it because that's been a real question I've had is like, yeah, we know what those places do when they're actual springtime and summertime roll around. But this tournament yeah. again, it's early and the weather in the country has been, yeah. you know, holding out on the cold more than the the warm warming trend so I, i'm really really curious to what you would have to do that early there you know i'm sure it's not anything close to how you would fish it in the spring because I, I mean the water temps are going to have to be just ridiculously cold they'll be in the low 40s i would think Ugh. you know what you do you just stay home from that tournament that's how Jimmy takes it. <laughs> but um, we'll catch them. I mean, I do a winter series here in northeastern Pennsylvania in the Harvey's Lake. And long, we, we go out and uh, we're out there and like the, the, the line freezes up. We fish it until the ice goes on. We almost fished all year this year because it didn't freeze up. And um, we go out and it's like zero degrees, six degrees. And we're out there like fishing a tournament for eight hours with like 20 mile hour winds just because they're messed those good ones where when you like but, you rear back your spinning rod and you cast and nothing moves. Yeah. I've done that but twice yeah. in my life and was like, God, these northern yeah. guys are nuts to do this. You gotta drag <laughs> your rods in the water because the line will freeze and the air temps will colder than the water temps. So you like have to stick it and hold it in the water to like thaw your line out. But man, I, so, I uh I cheated the system and took a little bitty dr uh dropper bottle of uh alcohol. Yeah. Because we, we used to use alcohol where I work to unfreeze airlines in heavy equipment and hydraulic yep. systems. I do excavating, so I, I know what that's about. Yeah. Yeah, so first first time I did the did a tournament when it was like that and everything froze up, I was like, Oh, I got a fix for this. Next time they'd freeze up, tap all the eyes with a little alcohol, drop a little alcohol on the reel. <laughs> no more problems. Well, at least for like yeah. two minutes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'd be but, worried that that would eat through my line a little bit. I never had any issues with it. I mean it's, it's rubbing alcohol. It's not nothing nothing crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but no, I just like to um, just reach out and thank everybody. I mean, I, I mentioned the, the tournament, but um, Old Town, like I mentioned, the autopilot was just spectacular. Between that, <clears throat> my Dakota lithium battery, because I was covering 10 miles a day, pretty much just running from spot to spot to spot. Um, that that new Dakota 135 amp hour battery is just like unbelievable. It's like small, it's small, as a 50, small as a 54 <laughs> amp hour battery, but like it just runs forever and uh wow. i have that and i cover a ton of water with it and um that with that autopilot and it's just with with how windy it was down there and trying to fish those points to be able to actually like just hit spot lock and set up on spot and be able to actually sit and worry about fishing instead of kayak positioning it's just incredible so thanks to old town and and uh dakota lithium for all of that and then obviously thank my wife for uh let me go to these fishing events while she stays home and holds the fort down. So she's pretty, uh, pretty special. And I thank her for that. And, um, my, my business partner, I said, everyone, I actually run an excavating company and, uh, we do foundations, septic systems, like all kinds of land clearing jobs and a lot of residential stuff. And in the winter time we have, uh, I had to leave early for a tournament last year. Cause we have like 160 townhouses that we service for snow removal. And, uh, oh, wow. so there's a lot of stuff going on and, uh he actually he steps up and helps me out a lot my partner joe so i thank him for for doing that while i'm out in the way and having fun while he's busting his pump you know <laughs> <laughs> good friend what about you casey anybody you want to thank yeah i mean <clears throat> of course old town they've they've been with me the longest and you know supported me every step of the way and and they bend over backwards for for anything that i need and i mean I, I i i wouldn't be where i am now without them um all the light keeps going out um <laughs> you know dakota lithium I, I run the same battery ryan just mentioned i mean 
I, I keep that one and I keep a spare. I've actually killed that 135 amp before, you know, running like 15, 16 miles. Jeez. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, luckily this time I, I, I didn't need my spare, but, um, yeah, that 135 amp is a freaking beast. And, uh, um, you know, Hummingbird, AFCO, uh, Minn Kota, uh, Sniper Marine, Fish USA, Cash and Fishing Rods, uh, Catch, um, and I'm uh, probably forgetting somebody, but, uh, but I mean, I, I just, I always try to tell people, you know, it, it, whether it's my sponsors or who, whoever sponsors it is, but like, if, if you find something you like, just support that company, those companies that are investing in, in the anglers and the tournaments, um, you, you got to support those companies because they're the ones that are, that are going to end up putting more and more money into our sport. And, um, yeah, so absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. That's a fantastic so I, point. I appreciate I mean... the opportunity to, to, to give everybody a shout out here and, and no, yeah. I appreciate the interview. Yeah, man, we appreciate y'all y'all coming on, and appreciate you giving that. I mean, that's great advice. I too too many people come into this, you know, the sports booming, and guys come into it and they see the fruits of other people's labors. You know, people like y'all with you know good sponsors, big names behind them, and they're like, I want that. You know, it's kayak fishing; it can't be hard to get that. You should give me that. I have an Instagram, you know, and it's not that. Like, don't don't support a company because they give you something. Support that company because you appreciate their stuff and it'll eventually pay yep. off for you. 100%. And then also I just not, I wanted to not really thank, but congratulate um, just old town and like the performance. I mean, I don't think anybody's like swiped a, a tournament like, like old town did. And it was just it was so cool to be there and see that. And I mean, Ryan and I finished second in day one. And um, Jimmy McClurkin. Jimmy McClurkin was up there. William Brewer. Um, so obviously, you know, the hardware, right? There's six pieces of hardware for a second and third for two days, old town anglers took five of the six. So that was just, uh, incredible. Yeah. So are, is all of those fishing out of the autopilots or is it all kind of different crafts? Um, most of them are autopilots. I know Jimmy has a, a big water too. I don't know what he was using down there. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, I'm he's, sure he's got a fleet, running. man. There's no telling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah brought five boats with him or something <laughs> it's hard to, hard to get me out of the autopilot though that's for sure man i've i've only tried one for like an hour and it's just not my thing for where i normally fish just because of like like where i fish in gunnersville that motor ain't gonna do you no good you know what i'm saying like it's just too grassy too shallow but like i think from an offshore standpoint it's probably one of the best options you can get like yeah. And again, I mean, I've never, I, one thing I didn't try was, you know, popping the motor up and paddling one, you know, so yeah. how, do they move pretty good through the water with the motor up. Yeah, I mean, they're big boat. Um, oh yeah. You, I mean, you, you can can't, move it, but it's not, I mean, it's not going to be like a light kayak, you know what I mean? To, to paddle around, especially if it all loaded down with gearing rods and everything. So, um, it, it, it'll paddle, but it's, you'll work at it, you know, um, I wouldn't want to do it all day. Absolutely. I mean, I wouldn't want to do it all day in a in a light kayak yeah. anymore. Hey, look, I, I fish. I fish. I, I, fish yeah, KBF. I don't want to do it ever. But. I, I fish yeah. KBF over Hobie for a reason. I'm a little lazy when it comes. Hey. To, I want to go fishing and have fun. You know, like I'm like, oh man, that pedaling stuff's a lot of work. So I know so many guys that are are on that. Like, I think Hobie would like double their their participation if. I mean, I mean, they have a cap, but I just know so many guys that are like, I will not fish Hobie just because. I'm yeah. fat and I want to stay that way. Like <laughs> I'm okay with using my motor. Like <laughs> I want to use my motor. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when you, it's just, it's tough for like the covering water portion, right? If you're covering like, if you like to cover like 10, 15 miles, I mean, that's a whole lot of work, man. I, I got to like practice all winter for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You better gotta, start doing your cardio now. <laughs> like my, my winter hobby is cycling so I can get ready for yeah. fishing season. <laughs> well, that's awesome guys, man. Well, we appreciate y'all coming on and you know, great ambassadors of the sport you know we appreciate your stories and your input insights on everything and uh names that we see at the top all the time so it was great to ryan have you back on and and casey to to have you on since we don't 
remember if we've had you on. You don't remember. I swear we did, but I could be wrong. We talked to a lot of people. Hey man, but I'm, uh, like I said, my memory sucks. <laughs> I can't remember what happened yesterday a lot of times. So, so hey, yeah, this I'm is your first event you won, right? Yeah, th- well, thank you guys too, though, man. I mean, like you guys like mentioned a little earlier in the podcast, like you, uh, you with the whole running the tournament trail piece and being able to fish. I mean, taking the time out of your guys' day to like do a podcast and put stuff out there. And I mean, you're you're like that company that's helping the sport out right you help give the anglers a platform to speak and give us time and like that's we're really thankful for that so i really appreciate you guys spending your time to have us on and talk about what we're doing and um, i'm sure you guys are out there fishing just like we are and i'm sure you have a hammer them too so it's just you, you take your time out of your day and we really we really appreciate that you know what i mean so oh man no I, that's yeah it's good to hear that. man we, we appreciate yeah, that comment second that. yeah thanks guys that's it's we always say it will well, me and me and old Dan always used to say, we don't do this for y'all. We do this for us. And he was, he was referencing, we do it because we get so much awesome information from you guys that we have on. I mean, we get to talk to literally every <laughs> top notch tournament angler in the country at any given time. And we get all sorts of great information out of you, but it is, it's, you know, we, I mean, paddle and fin's been around since before the podcasting boom in kayak fishing. We we're we're kind of the OG at it, you know, and it is, it's just, that's what we're here for is just push the sport forward, get it to as many people. That's why, you know, for anybody that's listened to this, that don't know we have other shows segments. We've got a segment in fishing for just about everybody. We have kayak hunting segments. So just, we're just here for y'all. We're here to support, you know, kayaking as much as we can kayak fishing, uh, at least tournament guys that are trying to get to a point to make a living doing this. So, uh, but again, we, we, yeah, I was go gonna ahead. say if you ever if you ever make it up north and you want to go up to Ontario, hit hit me up when you're up in the area. Like I said, we'll take you up and you'll 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 fall in love with the drop shot. I promise you that. Man, I don't know if I'd come home. Like, <laughs> if I'm ever <laughs> throwing back three and four pound smallmouth because they just aren't the ticket. Yeah. I have died of a massive stroke and went to heaven because that's <laughs> that's all that would feel like. Yeah, that'll happen to you, especially <laughs> September. September up there is special. It's cold and you got to watch the wind, but man, it is fire. Like it's it's unreal. All right. I'm canceling my beach trip this year. I'm going to Ontario instead. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going northbound. Well, guys, we appreciate it so much, and thank you all again for taking the time out to come hang out with us and uh, talk about it. And, uh, you know, I'm sure we'll see you again. We we try and keep up with everybody throughout the year, so hopefully we'll have you back on for the years over with, man. So good luck yeah. at y'all's next events, and we'll see you then. Yeah, so yeah I hope so. Appreciate it, guys. Good thank luck at your man. event, too, at Gunnersville. Ah, oh, we yes, appreciate sir. it. We're going to need all the help we can get. <laughs> yeah, we'll see you there, uh, Casey. Hopefully. Uh, yeah, hope, we'll hope to see you it. there. Awesome, yeah. guys. Well, y'all have a good night. We'll see you soon. Yeah, you too. Thanks, guys. Take care. Appreciate it. Awesome. I love it. Yeah. I love it. That's good stuff. It is. Uh, that's a, that, that looked like it was an awesome event. I mean, they had yeah, tons it's... of. 20 inch fish 19 to 20 inch fish all over the place 18 to 20 inch fish too like and it was it was it's crazy to see old town stacking the leaderboard up like that um you know we've seen it you know go through periods where it seems like everybody that was one in was in a hobie and then i know you know the new canoe guys ran the train in the kbf for a while and and the hobie cody milton when he was in his pursuit you know you couldn't stop him for a little while Derek brundle and matthew conant um they all have it but uh i don't think any of them have been as dominant as what old town did this weekend and i don't care what any it doesn't matter which national trail it was that it happened in one yeah. <clears throat> one company five sponsored anglers and one manufacturer took home five of the six pieces of hardware so well didn't isn't the last didn't ryan nye that was didn't he win the last kbf trail yeah and he's also in an old town yeah. old old town showing out yeah they've he's got it where it counts yeah but uh yeah so another great event definitely puts lake murray this i know we've done lake murray shows before but this one talking to these guys put it more on my radar than talking with As any of the should, other past yeah. yeah i was looking it, at their you're gonna hear a lot about lake murray this year i mean i was looking at their tournament schedule and i think they have the MLF Pro Series circuits going there. The Bassmaster Elites are going there. They got like the BFLs. Or, I mean, they got BFLs going Coast there too. So. And all sorts of stuff. Yeah. 
So they're they're going to have all kinds of good big events. Well, I'm definitely going to have to year. to keep it on the radar and uh you know, maybe go dabble that way. I know we've got some some uh friends of the paddle and fin world out there might have to go bum a couch bum a spare bedroom <laughs> yeah that's another great thing about doing this podcast you'll learn garrett is we will eventually have a place to stay everywhere yeah like when i saw susky got thrown back on the board hit up sean said hey i'm first dibs on spare room in your house and he was like you so bam <laughs> ain't got to pay for nothing yeah. on that trip now it sounds like we gotta make a trip to ontario or something that that one's been on my radar for a while. I just don't talk about it. We had it on yeah. the Ontario Kayak Bass Club, I think is the club that's up there. Mm-hmm. Um, it was awesome. It was a fully Canadian show. If you love oh, wow. how Canadians talk, I did <laughs> my greatest job of not sounding like that or mimicking that at all. I was very professional and very proud of myself. But we got talking about the fishing up there, and that was like what opened my eyes to the waters up that way you know before then i was like they don't they don't they don't fish for bass and up there like you cross the border they fish for trout like that's it you know (laughs) like trout and salmon like but uh you you could argue that they have some of the best bass fishing in the country at certain at certain times of the year for sure i mean they're throwing back four pound smallmouth yeah second to nothing but uh, just just another quick recap, as as everybody's heard already, we'll just hit it again. Casey Reed with the day one win and the two day double up win. Ryan with the day two win. Big shout out to our teammate, mine and your teammate, Jimmy McClurkin. Uh, he had a really good show in fourth place day one, eighth place day two, and got second place in the uh, double up. So congrats, Jimmy. Good job, man. And uh, I do have a, a few tournaments to go over. Uh, He's so, also leading the AOY. Now. Oh yeah, I can't believe I forgot to mention that. I told you that. But yeah, he's uh he's holding down the KBF AOI right now, so we wish him luck. Yeah, and keep it uh, up. he's a pretty consistent guy in the KBF, so I think he's had a good enough start that he might be able to to yeah. make something happen the rest of the year. He had had some shoulder problems last year, had to have some surgery, and oh. like I remember he fished the KBF NC basically like in a sling. Yeah. He, basically, he he was still supposed to be in the sling and. But uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on him, too, as well as these other guys. But yeah. we did. We had some other tournaments. Uh, got a few to hit here. Uh, first up, we had the Tennessee Bass Nation event on Chickamauga with yeah. uh, 94 <laughs> anglers. Uh, Garrett, you did awesome at that one, didn't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, did, I, had, I had made some bad decisions during the event, and it cost me. Well, you had a bass boat roll into your spot before you got there. That's not really your fault. Yeah, but I mean, I probably should have went back. But uh, at that time, I was so committed to it because it was like four miles from the ramp that I was like, Crap. I want you to keep <laughs> keep that in mind when you think about what we're doing this weekend. Yeah, I know. That's exactly okay. what I was like. Oh, God, I hope it does not happen again two weekends in a row. <laughs> but yeah, so they had 94 anglers uh, show up for that one. Uh, Luke Graham took first with 99 inches. Very impressive. Second place. Joby All Barry small mouth. 96 and a half. He was all small mouth too yeah, as well, right? First and second, all small mouth. All, all and chick. Then fourth and then was also all small mouth. Jesus. And then a rounding out third place was a, uh, our very own Randall Wallace uh, took the drive up there, got 93 and a half, all large yeah. mouth. Yeah. I fished the same ramp as him and he said he'd never been there before or the second time there. He'd never been to that spot and he just was going to fish and Whack warm it. out. So, Figures. <laughs> Yeah, so, was, uh, well, it sounds like you figured it out. <laughs> so TVKA was also on that lake uh, with the Tennessee Bass Nation. 52 yeah. anglers for that with a three fish limit. First place, Will Miller with 56 and three quarter. Second place, Bob uh, Don- Donahoe. Donahoe with 55. Yeah. Third place, Chris Walters with 53 and a quarter. Uh, moving on from there, we have the Georgia Kayak Fishing League. Georgia Kayak Fishing League on Lake Okanoe in Sinclair, 34 anglers with a five fish limit. First place, Mike Watson with 87 inches. Second place, Shetse Hugh. Shet? Shez? Yep. I'm going to screw that one up. Uh, 85 and a half inches. Third, nope. I'm going to end up swearing, which I mean, I do that anyway. So the third place, Rick Johnson with 82 inches. Moving on from there, we got the North Texas Kayak Championships, Lake Granberry. 92 anglers, five fish limit. 
Here's what we're seeing. Here we go. I knew Texas was going to already be showing out. First place, Aaron Page, 98 and a half inches. Second place, Christian Cooper with 96 and a half inches. Third place, Dan Wells with 95. Yep. Uh, next up, another Texas event, the Texas Kayak Bass League on, on Austin and Lady Bird. 115 anglers. First place, uh, Ramos Perez with 94 and a half. Second place, Tony Sebrin with 92 and three quarters. Third place, Dustin Hicks with 92 and a half. Just to show you some of the fish that Texas produces, which no one's questioning what kind of fish they have. Yeah. Uh, Jared Parker, that was in fifth, had a 23. Jacob Moeller had a 24 and a quarter. Uh, Ricky Ulig had a 24 and a quarter. And John Wington had the 23 and a quarter. So donkeys, the donkeys in Texas are moving around. Yeah, uh, they're on the move. Few, few more left. We've got the Foothills Kayak Anglers uh, event on Lake Rotus, Hickory and Lookout, 56 anglers, three fish limit. First place, Austin Vang with 52 and three quarters. Second place, Mark Wilkins with 52 and a quarter. Third place, Tony Vixie Sack with 48 and three quarters. Third place, uh, or, I'm sorry, third place. Next event, I'm uh, the Arizona Bass Nation qualifier on Saguaro Lake. 33 anglers, five fish limit, and this was a tough one. Uh, first place was Bennett Shulkin with 70 and a half for five fish. Think mm -hmm. back, Ryan had 73 with four. Yeah. Uh, and Bennett was the only angler to catch a limit in the tournament. Second place was uh, Mario Galavez with 63, and third place Lance Engel with 46 and a half. So that was a grinder. Um, and I haven't heard of that one. I, I've we we cover the Arizona Bass Nation stuff or Arizona fishing. I haven't yeah. heard that lake before. There were only thirty five fish caught in that whole tournament with thirty three anglers. <clears throat> so that's done something. Yeah, that's, that's a little rough. I mean, I so I, oh, here's I another it, event. So I don't know if it was, maybe was condition wise or just that lake. So I don't know right. nothing about that lake, but. Uh, so there was another event out there, the Kayak Anglers Association of Central Arizona. Same lake, had 45 anglers with five fish uh, limit. First place, uh, Ramon Rana with 77 and a half. Second place, Bennett Shulkin with the 70 and a half. And third place was Mario Galvez with 63. 53 fish caught in that tournament. Same time, had a few more people. Yeah. Uh, first and second were the only two to catch a limit, but... Uh, one of the guys we're, we're, we're hearing these, you know, small bags, which typically is a lot of smaller fish. Uh, William Rowan 15th caught a 23 and three quarters. So the big ones are there. They just weren't playing. So yeah, uh, it makes like me it. lead more to a conditions Tough. thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, and then, uh, last up the California Slay nation kayak series on McClear Lake in LaGrange, California, 40 anglers, five fish limit. First place, Max Lee with 86 and a quarter. Second place, Damian Tao. It's in California. He's going to okay. cash a check. That's how it works out there. Uh, 84 and three quarters and third place, David Morris with 80 and a half. And, oh, here we go. Here's a little bonus nugget. There was a kayak tournament in Kuwait. What? Let me see if I can get it to pull up. <clears throat> what were they fishing for? I don't know. We'll find out. So they were trying to see. So it was in Sabia, Kuwait. Five days, three species. They were fishing for Tiger Tooth Croaker, Spangled Emperor, and Brim. And it's in centimeters. So I have no idea how to convert that because I'm stupid. Convert it to American. No. <laughs> Take a guess. <laughs> yeah, we're right. we're going to say this fish on here is probably about, about 14. Uh, hold on. I'm going to share the screen show you what one of these looks like. What is uh, it? A Tiger Tooth Croaker? Is that what you said? Yes. It looks kind of like a trout, like a speck. Yeah. So huh. that's the tiger tooth croaker. And then we have the spangled emperor that's upside oh, that's down. Cool. So oh, is that's a really water? cool looking fish. I, I'm assuming so. <clears throat> I like the fish monkey American gloves that he had on. Yeah, I like it too. That's really good looking fish. Huh. And then brim. Dude, even the brim looks like rude. The thing looks like aggressive. Look at fins, the dorsal fin. So when are we going to Kuwait to fish for these? I'm down. <laughs> these look wow. awesome. That's a pretty fish. Is that inches on the bottom? Uh, I think it is. Oh, that is. 
So about 18 and a quarter, 18 and a half. That's 47 centimeters. I see a lot of Hobies in these pictures. Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably the most common international brand. Hey, I know what that one is. That is a hoodoo. Hmm. These are cool fish. I know I'm stuck on this. We should be ending the show, but these are cool. Appreciate my wife for throwing that little nugget in there. That's actually really cool. Kayak tournament in Kuwait. Awesome. Well, that about wraps it up. Anything else you want to touch on? Ready to get to Gunnersville? Yeah, ready to get to Gunnersville. Get to Chickamauga off my palate. Clean, cleanse my palate of that. And... You need to, and you need to leave all that bad juju at home because I'm already yes, like not confident in this tournament right now. Um, yeah, we'll see. I mean, I'll be going down there Thursday, so when this posts, I'll be driving down there probably. Um, and then try to check out the lake and see what's going on. I mean, I'm expecting it to start warming. I've already heard of bedfish getting caught on the lake right now. Figures. So. That's why I want to go down there right now, like tomorrow. I just want to catch some bedfish. I don't. Yeah. But then again, it's like, I don't want to catch the bedfish because I need those fish. I mean, we can go to another spot that's not where we're going to fish and go pe catch bedfish. I mean, fish. we could go back to where I went Sunday because I know a lot of folks are going to fish that. We'll just go out there and go catch as many as possible. <laughs> For anybody that listens to this show, if you here. see me, yeah, if anybody yeah. listens to this show, if you see me out there, please don't kick my ass. I'm totally talking shit. I'm not going to come sore up anybody's fish. <laughs> And I'm too old to fight fair. I'm just going to shoot you in the kneecap. So it probably wouldn't work out well for you if you plan on pedaling in that tournament. But uh, yeah, another good show. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to this show. A great one with uh, the winners from Lake Murray. Another great KBF event next week. Uh, you know, you can probably guess it. We're going to cover the winners from the Bassmaster event. 235 yeah. anglers signed up for that one. And then there's a local tournament that's up to 55 on it. And probably only. 10 people of that tournament, maybe 15 are in the Bassmaster. So they'll be, they'll be pushing 260, 265 anglers just in kayaks, uh, tournament fishing gunners this week. So we'll have a good show for you next week. Uh, but yeah, till then, peace out. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Good night.